Hi there. In this video I'll be sharing my techniques and tips on how I just use the primary colours and secondary colours to mix the flesh tones. Now be sure to watch it right through to the end because I've slowed it down here and there so you could take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. So these are the basic pencils I'll be using, which is the primary colours and one secondary colour that I'm using which is green. There's two types of green, the dark green and a, a, like a warmer green. So there's a cold green and a warm green. Throughout this video I've included the reference image so you can see as I go along. But bear with me because it is slightly different perspective because the actual drawing on the easel is being foreshortened by the perspective so just bear with me that the proportions wouldn't look the same because obviously you've seen it at different angles so bear with me on that all that is is to show you the colors and how i'm applying them so basically the first thing i'm doing is just trying to get some sort of idea of structure with um, developing the form by adding the white, yellow ochre, red, and using the green then for shadows and to actually subtle the colors down. So basically we're just getting things into position, not worrying about it being dead on, it's just a matter of just trying to fill that tooth of the pastel mat. It's basically getting the sort of feel of the portrait, getting some sort of idea of where things go. I'm applying the highlights lighter than needed. The reason being is when I add the colours on top, this white will shine through. So it looks a bit white here, but in time that will be covered over with pigment. Now I'm also adding lemon yellow to the mix now. So when I need something vibrant, I add a little bit of yellow, lemon yellow to it. And then the subtle areas I'm using yellow ochre. So, and then I'm using blues for the shadows. So if I'm mixing like uh, a red and yellow ochre or lemon yellow, it's creating an orange. So I'm using then blue to dull it down because you're using the complementary color to dull a color down. Now, if, I'm, if it's just more red than orange, I'll use the green to dull it down. So you'll see me using green in some areas, blues in others. Now really you've got to be patient with this, it does take time to build it up. I mean, when you start putting the colour on it doesn't look like the colour at all that you need. So it's very difficult to find a colour which is exactly the same. And it's always interesting to use just the primary colours because things get really subtle. So you have to sort of imagine later how it's going to look. So sometimes you have to put darker pigments in and then you'll know when you've added the white and the other subtleties that it will create the correct colour. So, so this really is a basic undercoat for when now I want to start putting the richer colours on. Now you can pause the video now and just check the numbers of these Karen D. Ash pencils what I use for the rich colours. And also I'm using here is a nine value system for lights for darks and a mid-tone. So basically I'm just trying to get the values uh, down to nine. If you want to know more, I've done an in-depth video of how I use nine values. So if you want to check that out later, I'll leave a link in the description below. So what I'm doing is just getting the light white down first, then putting the colours on top of it, just very lightly, just brushing across the surface. And then for the shadows, I'm using red and green, which are complementary, which makes a great shadow, rather than using black. So it's basically just working out where things go. Now for a really deep shadow, I'm using a cold red and a cold green. 
dark green. I use a mirror regular just to have a look at the reflection because it's surprising how it brings out imperfections that you you didn't see because your eyes just get too sort of fixated really sometimes so you need to look at it from a different angle. So here's a closer look at how I'm doing it. I've slowed it down a little bit um, just so you can actually see each pencil as I'm using it. Uh, but basically you're just building it up, putting the white down, laying the colour on top of the white, putting the white down again, laying the colour on top of the white. Now if your colour's too rich, you add the complementary colour to dull it down and then add white to it and then keep applying and keep going over and eventually what that does, it creates quite a lot of subtleties in each layer and that, all, all them layers shine through and it creates a nice texture to the skin because the skin isn't smooth so what I tend to do is do little circles, little squiggles um, just to give it a little bit of interesting marks, texture to the skin If you found you're getting value with this video, why not subscribe? It's absolutely free, then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. Now for the eyes, I'm using brown and dark ultramarine. Now that makes a really nice shadow. Rather than using black, I'll use uh, that combination and then roughly getting in the, the eyes, putting the white ready for the glazing of the colour over the top. Now for the white of the eyes I use orange and blue. That makes a really nice grey for the eyes. If you're enjoying this video, why not give it a like and share it with your friends. I'd really appreciate that, it would help the channel. Now here's the Karen D. Ash pencils I'm using for the eyes. Really great pencils these are, very sort of rich in pigment, so I suggest buying some of these if you want something to really stand out. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below of all the materials, so take a look after you've seen the video if you want to know more. Now I do use orange as the complementary colour to the blue for subtleties and shadows of the, the blue so you can use a particular blue but to make it a shadow just add a bit of orange to it and it will create a natural darker blue. Now how I'm blending the colours is to actually use the Carbothello white because it's quite a chalky white and it's really nice to get that velvety feel. If I'm just go, I'll go over it slightly with the white, it blends it in quite nice and then add a bit more colour on top.
Now, while you're painting as well, my approach is to let go of the mind and to relax and open up the heart. So the more you send love to the image, whoever, whatever you're drawing, energy will come back from that image. And then you will transfer that through your hands into your drawing. Fear only happens when you think about something too much or you have expectations and memories. So just relax, be open, be empty, be nothing. Just allow the art to express itself. Just let it happen. This technique you have to be really patient as well because it does take a while for it to actually shape together. Once you've done a couple of drawings and then you know what's going to happen, you, you, you tend to sort of relax because you know it's going to change and it's going to develop. Uh, but when you first do it, you think, oh my God, it looks a mess, you know, what's happening? So don't worry about that. Don't, if it looks a bit scratchy or a bit sort of not correct, just keep persevering, that's the key. Just keep at it. Don't let your mind talk you out of it. And if you do get stressed out, just have a break. Just take a, a while away from it, five or 10 minutes, and then come back fresh and start again. Now with this drawing I'm tending to wanting to put the hair lightly in first, just a little bits of strands here and there just to give me an idea of where things are going uh, and then working around that. Um, just a basic sort of shape, not putting every strand in that, I'll do that later when I've done the hair, but it's just giving me an idea of where the shapes are. Here's the colours I'm using for the shadow area. Using a Caran d'Ache dark green, which is perfect for the shadows, and then using the warm red with it to create that sort of colour you want. And also using yellow ochre and lemon yellow to it as well, just to, to get it sort of the right shade. But again, using that white for the subtleties, then going over again with the colour.
Right, a closer look now at how I'm doing the creases in the neck line. Uh, very subtly, just using the green and red as complementary, just getting that sort of subtlety, using the white over it and then keep going over the colours. Basically, like everything else, it's just a matter of just building it up. Um, squinting your eyes as well all the time, just so you can see the correct value as well and then matching it with the value scale which I shown you earlier. It's interesting though because what you have to do is squint the eyes to see the value but then you widen the eyes to see the colour. So you're basically going from one to the other all the time while you're drawing. So I'll just give you a little bit of a tip there. Hope you've enjoyed part two. Uh, let me know how you feel by leaving a comment. I'd really appreciate that. It would help the channel as well to grow. Um, just let me know how you feel. And also keep a look out for part three, which will be coming shortly, where I'll be drawing the hair, the clothes and the background, and putting the, the final details of the whole portrait in. Thank you for watching the video right through to the end. If you found value in it and you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Appreciate it. it would help the channel. Leave a comment and a message in the comments below. Uh, let me know what sort of videos you want me to produce. I've actually left a couple of links here for you to uh, click on. And to subscribe, click on the circle here. It's absolutely free and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. Thank you so much. Take care and be well.